Thank you for watching my first video about sleep apnea. In this video, I'm going to talk about what sleep apnea actually is and how you can diagnose it. Obstructive sleep apnea is a part of a spectrum which is known as sleep breathing disorders. Snoring is the mildest form of the sleep breathing disorders. Obstructive sleep apnea, or OSA, however, lies on the extreme end of the spectrum. If you have sleep apnea, your breathing gets obstructed and sounds a bit like this. And then the cycle continues. If you look at the display on the screen, there is another form of sleep breathing disorder, which lies roughly in the middle. This is upper airways resistance syndrome. Here there isn't a complete blockage of the airway like in OSA, but there is a very narrow airway. Therefore it takes quite a lot of effort to breathe through this narrowing and sounds a little bit like this. Here is a quick test for you. Who in this picture do you think has obstructive sleep apnea? Of course this is just a trick question that they all do. Obstructive sleep apnea can affect young children as well as the elderly. It also doesn't matter if you're thin or overweight, anyone can get sleep apnea. And an awful lot of people don't actually realise this. Sleep apnea leads to a lot of other conditions and that is why it is so dangerous. It can lead to raised blood pressure and diabetes for example. Interestingly, as soon as you treat obstructive sleep apnea, the blood pressure and sugar levels can return to normal. Many people gain weight when they have sleep apnea. And again, people suddenly start to lose weight when they are treated for their breathing problem. This weight gain also leads to a vicious cycle as it worsens sleep apnea. So losing 10% of your body weight can lead to an extra 30% improvement in your breathing at night. As you can see, there are a number of other problems associated with sleep apnea. The most worrying of these is road traffic accidents. You are up to 12 times more likely to have a car accident if you have sleep apnea. And this is the reason why the DVLA are changing their rules about allowing obstructive sleep apnea patients from driving. So now that we have explained what sleep apnea is, how can you diagnose it? Well, I think a good starting point would be the stop bang questionnaire. This is a series of eight questions and you need to go through these one by one. I think it would be best if you went to the stop bang questionnaire website, because that will give you a very accurate reading of what your score would be. But roughly speaking, if you say yes to three of these eight questions, you ought to go on to the next step, which is to organize a sleep study for yourself. A good sleep study for obstructive sleep apnea is normally done in your own home. This, I believe, provides a more representative recording of your sleep whilst you're in your own bed. This small device sits on your chest and measures a number of things including oxygen levels, airflow through your nose, the amount of effort you're making to breathe and so on. This device can be used in children as well as adults to diagnose sleep apnea. It is particularly useful in children as it can help parents make the decision whether or not to put their child through an adenotonsillectomy operation. I provide a private sleep study service using one of the most advanced devices available on the market. This can be couriered directly to your own home the same day and picked up by the courier the next morning. If you'd like to take advantage of this service, please contact my secretary and we will organise this for you as soon as possible. 